For many years, there were no Christian believers among the Nishi tribe in the Solansini district in India. Uh, missionaries were discouraged. Nobody seemed to be interested in Christ. Then one day, that all changed. A high government official's son became terminally, youngest son became terminally ill. A Hindu pharmacist, uh, knowing that the boy was beyond medical help, said, you should try the Christian God, Jesus Christ. I hear one day he raised a man from the dead named Lazarus who had been dead four days. So as the government official went home that night, he heard wailing and crying in his house. He knew what that meant. His son had died. And so he went into the house, he went up the stairs, went into his son's bedroom, got down on his knees and laid his hand on his son's chest. He was lying there in repose and he said, Jesus, I don't know who you are, but I hear you raised a man from the dead who'd been dead for four days. Our son's just been dead for a few hours. If you raise him from the dead, I promise you, our family will worship you. And immediately the son's eyes began to flicker and he came back to life. And the people like were in awe. They said, Jesus, how amazing you are. Who are you? What love you have for us? And within days, hundreds of people had become followers of Christ. Why? Because they'd seen the supernatural power of God at work. We've seen many Muslims and Hindus become Christians in recent years because they see miracles of, uh, of healing and God supernaturally communicating with them through dreams. Have you experienced miracles in your life? When Jesus was here, he did lots of miracles. When he ascended into heaven, then the apostles did lots of signs and wonders. In the Old Testament, prophets, particularly Elijah and Elisha, did all kinds of miracles. Why don't we see as many today? Should we? Can we? I believe we can. After Jesus performed many miracles, he said, Truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I've been doing, and they will do even greater things than these because I'm going to my Father. Far from saying miracles would cease, he said you'll need to do even more because I'll be sending you the Holy Spirit. So what does Jesus mean by that? At minimum, he means what we saw in the book of Acts. Jesus ascended into heaven. Uh, before he left, he was doing all the miracles, the only one. And then the Holy Spirit came on all the apostles and they began to do signs and wonders. They preached boldly about the resurrection and within a couple weeks, 5,000 people became followers of Christ. Then the apostles and other Christian followers fanned out to other places and they took the gospel ultimately to Europe, Asia, Africa, and today 2.2 billion people call themselves followers of Christ. That spread of the news about Christ is nothing less than supernatural. We read uh, that when the Apostle Paul went to the Roman province of Asia, God did extraordinary miracles through Paul so that even handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick and their illnesses were cured and the evil spirits left them. If you've committed your life to Christ, the Holy Spirit comes in you and the same power is available to you. The big thought throughout this, this is a, the first of a five-week series. Have you seen God's supernatural power lately? My big idea is that God is supernatural. Jesus Christ is supernatural. When you begin a relationship with God through Christ, the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit comes and lives in you. And so you should expect to see supernatural in your life. Let's suppose you're a novelist and you've written a novel and in it uh, the main character gets in a jam and you can't figure out how to get them out of trouble so you reach out to the supernatural and you bring that into your story and it's like a magician comes and waves a wand and uh, problem solved for the main character. And people reading that are thinking, wait a minute, this is a kind of a normal book about normal people. And all of a sudden this comes in, that doesn't seem right, it doesn't fit. That's the way a lot of people see the Bible. They say early Christian followers were desperate for a miracle, so they made up this whole idea of Jesus being raised from the dead. 
and Jesus doing all those miracles. They didn't happen, but they made it up. Now, if that's what happened, I would agree with critics of the Bible. That's not right to just pull in something, you know, miraculous when it's not really there. But if you believe that there is a God who created the universe and that he is supernatural and then you begin a relationship with him through Jesus Christ who is supernatural, then it all makes sense. God does supernatural things. That's what he does. And so then all this we read about in the Bible makes sense and then experiencing it in our lives makes sense as well. I mean, all of us need supernatural miracles in our lives. Who doesn't want to see a miracle in their life? A farmer and his wife and son lived out far out in the hills. And I think they lived like under a rock because they had never been to the city. And they decided the time had come. And so they got in their old pickup and began the bumpy ride into the city. And when they got there, they were amazed. All these lights and all so much going on, so many people. And they got to the hotel and, and uh, the father said to his wife, um, you stay here, Junior and I will go in and check it out. So they went into this hotel and this beautiful chandelier and all this music coming out of three gorgeous restaurants and came around this turn and there's these two uh, golden double doors with the buttons in between and an old lady came up to them and pressed the button and she had like wrinkled skin and white hair and just could barely walk and the doors opened she got in about 30 seconds later a beautiful uh, lady young woman came out and he turned to Junior and said Junior quick go get mama <laughs> I mean, everybody hopes for a miracle like Papa thought that he saw but with Jesus, you see real miracles. You can experience the supernatural power of God in your life. Jesus tells us we should expect these miracles. How can we experience the supernatural power of God in our lives? I want to be talking about that over these next five weeks. I believe you can increase the likelihood of seeing the supernatural power of God in your life by putting into practice three principles from the Old Testament prophet Elisha. If you'd like to follow along with me today, I'm going to be uh, talking from 2 Kings chapter 2. If you want to use the Bibles under the seats, it's going to be on page 362. Almost every page in the Bible describing Elisha shows a miracle. That's what he was known for. He's not to be confused with Elijah. Elijah was his mentor. Um, in the Old Testament, people would do miracles from time to time, individuals. Um, one group that, that did those were, were the prophets. Um, Elijah was one of the most famous prophets of God. He served uh, in Israel in the 9th century B.C. Uh, then God uh, told him, your time is done, and I'm going to take you to heaven without you facing death. Well, Elisha knew that something epic was about to happen as they did their final tour of the prophets that Elijah mentored. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, stay here, the Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Now they'd spent about 10 years together and there was no way Elisha was going to let Elijah go on alone. He wanted to stay with him to the end. 50 men of the company of the prophets went, these are the people that Elijah mentored, and stood at a distance facing the place where Elijah and Elisha had stopped at the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up, struck the water with it. The water divided to the right and to the left, and the two of them crossed over on dry ground. Typical day for Elijah and Elisha. They did miracles like this all the time. When they crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, tell me, what can I do for you before I'm taken? Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit, Elisha replied. Elijah said, you've asked for a difficult thing. The reason it was difficult, because it wasn't his to grant. Only God could decide who would carry on the, the spiritual mantle of Elijah after he was gone. Then Elijah sets down a condition for Elisha to receive his request. Elijah said, yet if you see me when I'm taken from you, it will be yours. Otherwise not. It was imperative that Elisha see the horsemen and chariots coming down to take Elijah away. There would be times in the future when he would need to remember that day that angels touched down and took Elijah away. 
As they were walking along and talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire, horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elisha saw this and cried out, My father, the chariots and the horsemen of Israel. And Elisha saw them, him no more. Then he took hold of his own clothes and tore them apart. The whirlwind subsided, the, de the dust settled. Uh, he picked himself up from the sand in which he had pushed himself when the angels touched down. And he realized that Elijah was gone and the condition had been met for him to receive the power of the Holy Spirit. He'd seen the riders from the other world. So here's the first principle. If you want to see God's supernatural power in your life, cultivate awareness of the unseen supernatural power of God. If you want to see God's power in your life, you must be aware that it exists. And the unseen things we don't see, the power that's available. In 2 Kings 6, 17, uh, Elisha was surrounded by armies from enemies and his servant was all worried about it and said, this is terrible, we're going to get, we're toast. And Elisha prayed, O Lord, open his eyes so he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire around Elisha. I believe Elisha's ability to see these unseen spiritual powers began when that day the angels touched down and took Elijah. And he became more aware of the, what, what's, what is there in this world, power available that we don't see. My wife, Jory, and our son, Luke, were involved in a serious car accident 10 years ago in Kenya. Jory works there, so does Luke. And they hit a pothole, and their, their car careened off the road over a steep bank, uh, headed towards some huge trees. Both of them knew that they were going to die. And Jory just cried out, Lord, save us! All of a sudden, the car moved... And everybody knows the law of motion is that you don't change the motion of an object unless another mass changes it. And it moved and they were set down in some smaller trees and brush. And, you know, they both survived. Um, both of them are convinced that God saved them. Either he sent an angel or did it himself that day. So Mamie Douglas, come on up here, Mamie. Mamie has a couple experiences, uh, likewise. So Mamie uh, was, was uh, driving, uh, and uh, she was at a, a stoplight, and she pressed on the gas, car didn't move, did it three times, car didn't move, then a car came racing through the intersection, and uh, she realized that if God saved her that day, otherwise she would have been struck by this car. Another time she was driving on uh, Sunset Highway into 217, and uh, it was slippery, and her car began to spin around. She, uh, sh there were other cars. She should have hit them. She should have hit the guardrail. She could have been seriously injured. Instead, she ended up in a section that, uh, how could she get there? Well, unless God had done it. So give us the details. Okay, thank you. Hello, good morning. And uh, it happened at 2009. And uh, when I drove at the uh, um, stop at the uh, intersection, waiting for the green line, at 158 at the uh, Shana, I believe this street name, this uh, behind uh, Fred Meyer and Walker Road. Uh, yeah, and, and way over there, then and uh, green line, time for me to go. Then I press the gas, my car didn't go. Then I text to make sure I press the the right one gas or black, then I text it, make sure that the gas passed second time and the third time. My car is not going. At that moment, I'm thinking, I was thinking, I, maybe my car is time to go. I need a new one. That's the first thing came to my mind. I need a new car. So then, suddenly, it pretty much at the same time, there is the car drove very, very fast and went through the intersection. So at that moment, I was realized I was saved by something. I didn't know God at that time. So I just know I have a listen, my car not able to go. Okay. And that is the, uh, the second <laughs> event is a few months later. That was the uh, September, the last week of uh, September 2009. I believe it's 26. So I drove westbound from uh, at Highway 26 and get into uh, the um, 217, exit 217, you know, so the interchange. 
So when I just ride into the uh, the realm, so there a car, uh, the white car in front of me is a sprint. Then after a couple sprints, they continue driving. Then I was behind the car, not that far away. If I not sprint, my car will hit the front one, the one in front of me. Then I really calm. I didn't know what to do. I know I couldn't stop the car, could not uh, break it. Because if it break the car, it will cause really bad, you know, and we don't know what end up, you know. So I didn't uh, press that much, but my, then I feel my, I feel as uh, I sprint. I don't know my car and me, I, all I know is I sprint. And I saw the uh, max track under. Okay, that's all I remember. But at that moment, I, at that moment I thought, if I not stay, uh, stay away from that spot, the car behind me will hit me. Then the three, three risks. I either hit the first one, or the one behind me hit me, or I have the one side and uh, uh, hit the, the wall at the highway and maybe um, drove off to the uh, at the max track. Because I have the car accident last year, I uh, the person drove over that wall and uh, end up at the max track. That time, that event caused me think. That's the reason caused me to remember the, the memory of the car accident. So I, my car was uh, landed very gently at the at that spot. Okay, so from the first red spot to the second one. So at the same time when I landed over there, another car drove and parked beside me and asked me. How are you? What, how are you doing? Well, I I'm scared. I don't know. He said, "How do you get here? You've been lifted and a strong force. What happened? What's the what you what did you experience? Well, I spent. I spent. That's all I can tell him. I spent. That's why my car here. Then he said, "It's impossible from that point A to point B." Because there's some wall block it. You cannot just the car the from that point just directed to here because no track. He said, look, my I drive my car here, there's a track that's so the glass, they have the track is so how I get here. But I behind you. I didn't see what happened. How you get here, what you experience. Well, then I spin that's all I can tell him, I spin. Then he said, he saved you. I didn't know what he mean he saved you. Who nobody here who saved me. <laughs> <coughs> I was a that time I just a stop going to church, just the starter, okay. So and then one then I didn't know what happened. I just so frightened, okay then and he helped me and called the police and let me go out to the road. And while we waiting for the police, then I saw another car the uh, pit up. And a gentleman in the middle ages sit in the car, and his car spin a couple times. He smiled in the car, very relaxed, and looking at me. Then I look at him, going, Yes, look, look, this is my car, is whole my car spin. They said, Where? Where? I have no idea what. Just this car spin. He said, He didn't see it. I saw it. Okay, so I don't know. The supernatural did let me see it. The, the God saw me at that car spinning. That's a, that. But that car didn't end up like me into this spot. But he said, after a couple of spin, continue in the highway, drawing through it. Nothing happened. So that, that, that day, there's nothing, no car accident at the scene. Okay, only sprint. And I end up over there. So, and uh, I, um, after that, <laughs> Uh, may, I don't know how long, maybe the week or after the, the week after. So then I, um, in the church, I was somewhat listen. I, I don't know why. I just turned my head, you know, back. Then I saw the guy sit behind me, one or two rows. So I just. Stop. The same guy that helped same you after the accident. Same guy helped me that day, okay, and see what happened. And I, he questioned me, how you get here? Okay, then I saw him was struck. Oh my God, that guy is, that's the guy who helped me that day. After the service, I, in the hallway, I say hi to him and thank him and what he said. You should tell people. And you should tell people, I said. 
What I should tell people, I know not I with a broken English. What I can tell people, I have no knowledge. What I can tell people, I only good at number. This is my mind, okay. That's what I answer him that day. So I, I fly there when I try to prepare and tell this story to you. And I remembered that time, uh, you know, after the event, maybe a week or does the summit. The pastor at BCC, he did call me, asked me to talk like that today, tell people. But I say, ask me to say, tell people, and I say, no, I don't, I have nothing to tell people. I am a beginner, first of all. I am an immigrant. I have with a broken English. I, I do not have a thing to sh share, to tell people. This is my answer. Then he said, I'm sorry to uh, 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 bother you. Then, then but I'm I made sorry. You but I made you talk. Not you make me talk. I I remember it. But at that time, I forgot. I totally off my mind. I have an absent mind, memory loss for quite long. I'm not even know. Okay, that is. Then I uh, um, he told me to talk, but I say no because I didn't realize. Then and um, but in the service at the Sunday service, he said and a volunteer ask people whoever have a, a story and want to volunteer to talk come up to talk and because uh, he asked people to talk about daily feels sometimes the culture difference or the people's perception difference and they don't want the people tell them what to do so invite people come up to talk that I keep waiting and keep waiting how come nobody come up to talk I didn't realize he's talking asking me but I didn't realize until Friday so, but when I, f after I remember this, uh, what's going on, I told Pastor on a few months ago, I don't know, a few months ago, a year ago, then I have the uh, urge, the responsibility to tell as many people as I can. Thank you. Well, thank you. All right. <laughs> So clearly, Mamie and I believe that God saved her on those two occasions. His supernatural power worked in her life. A second, if you want to see God's supernatural power working in your life, believe that God's supernatural power is available to you. It's not enough just to believe that in supernatural power, but that you can attain it. You can experience it. Uh, after Elijah was taken away, Elisha picked up the cloak that had fallen from Elijah and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. Then he took the cloak that had fallen and struck the water with it. Now this is his moment. Am I going to be able to have the Spirit's power? Will I be able to do this? Where now is the Lord, the God of Elijah, he asked. When he struck the water, it divided to the right and the left, and he crossed over. The company of the prophets who were watching said the Spirit of Elijah is resting on Elijah. And they went and they bowed to the ground before him. So clearly, God's power was now on Elisha. The men of the city said to Elisha, Look, this town is well situated, as you can see, but the water is bad and the land is unproductive. Bring me a new bowl, he said, and put salt in it. So they brought it to him. Then he went out to the spring and threw the salt into it, saying, This is what the Lord says. I have healed this water. Never again will it cause death or make the land unproductive. And the water has remained unwholesome unwhol uh, to this day, according to the word Elisha had spoken. So there's another miracle showing that now he has the Spirit's power on him. Uh, here's a third one. From there, Elijah went up to Bethel, and as he was walking along the road, some youths came out of the town and jeered at him. Go on up, you bald head, they said. Go on up, you bald head. He turned around, looked at them, called down a curse on them in the name of the Lord. Then two bears came out of the woods and mauled 42 of the youths. So... He's not trying to uh, avenge, you know, that he was offended, but it's God's honor. They didn't believe in, in God. They didn't believe that Elisha was a prophet of God, and so uh, he, he did that. Um, you have to believe that God can use ordinary people like you because the power comes from him. James says Elijah was a man just like us. He wants us to know that Elijah and Elisha were people just like us. They pulled on their pants one leg at a time. But if you commit your life to Christ and you're fully committed to him, he can use you too. 
Uh, God finds people to use in unusual places. One of the surprises of 10 years ago was uh, the way God used Bono, the lead singer of U2. Uh, he was asked by President Bush to speak at the prayer breakfast in 2006. As he got up there, he says, if you're wondering what I'm doing here at a prayer breakfast, so am I. Uh, he said, you know, um, I'm not a man of the cloth, unless by cloth you mean leather. Um, and uh, he had gotten... Um, Concerned about the plight of Africans. Uh, 6,500 uh, Africans were dying every day from preventable, curable diseases. And so he got uh, leaders of uh, wealthy nations like uh, President Bush uh, to uh, forgive some of the debt to poor nations. Uh, he got Bush to uh, double uh, aid to, the, to Africa and to Global Health Fund and uh, provide... Uh, 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 antiretroviral drugs to many, many people in Africa and uh, bed nets for thousands of, of, of children to prevent, prevent them from getting uh, or help them not get a malaria. Uh, uh, George Bush introduced him to Jesse Helms to help him get uh, legislation through the Senate and he invited him to a U2 concerts and he, he said at the prayer breakfast, he said it was pretty weird having Jesse Helms come to a U2 conference. Our concert but this is even weirder me speaking here at the prayer breakfast he says one of the things I like about our country is the separation of church and state but I have to say at this point uh, it seems like uh, church and state have been separated from something else entirely their minds are you sure President Bush about me speaking here at the prayer breakfast and he talked about uh, all the, the lives that were being lost in, in Africa. And he said, do you remember the, the tsunami in, in Thailand in 2004? 150,000 people lost their lives. He says, in Africa, 150,000 lose their lives every month. That's a tsunami every month. And it's completely avoidable catastrophe. You can see God use you like God used Bono. Like God used Elisha if you cultivate an awareness of the supernatural power of God available to you and believe that it's available to you. If you don't believe in the supernatural and you don't believe it's available to you, you're not going to experience it. And third, you can experience the supernatural power of God if you live a life of obedience. Elisha asked for a double portion of God's spirit. He was a godly prophet. If you want to see the God's power in your life, you have to learn this lesson. God doesn't just bestow his uh, power on anyone indiscriminately. He reserves his power for the godly, for those who are wholly committed to obeying him. Apostle James reminds us, the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Then he cites the example of Elijah. It seems like this truth has been all but abandoned today. It seems like Christian culture is being overrun by decaying moral values. Christian divorce rate is climbing to nearly as high as non-Christians. Many of us watch the same TV shows and movie as non-Christians. We're just as materialistic as non-believers. If you want to see God's power in your life, you have to learn this lesson, that God doesn't bestow his blessing on just anyone. He strengthens those who are obedient. Godly King Asa said, For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. God is looking for obedient followers through whom he can demonstrate his supernatural power. Are you a candidate for his blessing? With the passing of Billy Graham at 99 years of age, uh, many people begin to think about uh, his, his life and uh, many people have asked, you know, why did, was God, did bless him so much uh, over his ministry? I mean, he was a counselor to President Truman, uh, Eisenhower, Kennedy, Lyndon Johnson, Richard Nixon, Gerald Ford, President Reagan, President George H.W. Bush, President Clinton, President George Bush, President Obama, and President Trump. He's been a, uh, a counselor to world leaders all over. 
And millions of people have come to Christ through his ministry. Why did God's supernatural power work with him so greatly? Well, one of the reasons has to be that he was obedient and faithful to God to his life's end. You can experience the supernatural power of God in your life. The Apostle Paul says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead. God's supernatural resurrection power is available to you. Look for it. Pray for it. Call on it. Lord Jesus, thank you for this powerful text in the Old Testament. How you showed power through Elisha. And you tell us that that same power, even greater works than you did, is available to us because now you've sent us the Holy Spirit. And so God, we want to claim that. We want to experience it. We believe that it's available to us. I want you to pray right now. Just tell God. Maybe you've had a supernatural experience in your life. Um, and uh, would you just maybe share that with him right now and uh, thank him for that. Or maybe you want to experience more supernatural power in your life and tell him you'd like to and you believe it's available to you. And you want to live obedient for him. You pray. Lord God that you are supernatural and as we invite you into our lives through Jesus Christ by your Holy Spirit that we will experience supernatural in Jesus name we pray amen